Let us, let us bow our heads and let us pray where we are. Our Father in heaven, we pray for your goodness. We pray for your kindness to us in this very moment. Uh, we pray that you open our eyes. We pray that you uh, allow your spirit to bless us, to open our understanding and help us digest your will. Help us to see the light and help us to be strong, sharp, Lord, in the midst of this crisis and glorify your name and, and be able, Lord, to not only to survive but to thrive and not only uh, in a personal way but to, to thrive with our families, to thrive with our community, O oh, Father, with our church. Glorify your name, O Lord. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So these are the days uh, of great challenges and important decisions. Many arguments in the public scene are trying to define uh, if the best was done in the case of the pandemic or um, what is the best to do for the situations. Now it is the challenge uh, of the uh, reopening the country, uh, but being safe. Uh, and, and in both alternatives are necessary. Both, both alternatives are so important, but of course, we need to stay alive. <laughs> but anyways, um, the, the fact is that we need to figure out what is the best, because there are normally many alternatives of what to do. What is best? Uh, when we go to the dictionary, the word best means uh, the most productive um, of good. So if you have something that is good and we take it to the utmost, then it would be best, the most productive of good. Also, it says offering or producing the greatest advantage, utility or satisfaction, uh, preferably of or more convenient, preferable or more convenient. So when we talk about what's best, we talk about uh, what benefits what benefits us most in absolute terms, and implies the existence of other options. Uh, for that reason, it's very important uh, to realize that there is the best option. Sometimes it is a big challenge to know what is best when making a decision, and um, and we can get even paralyzed, you know, like, should I, should I, shouldn't I, you know, uh, to decide for one alternative or the other. This time, we're going to try to make an exercise uh, to compare some alternatives, to compare some options in so, some key matters. I, I, I have chosen three. I don't want to preach long in Mother's Day. I want the mothers to enjoy their day. So, uh, but we're going to try to figure out God's best for a few fundamental matters. And I want to start talking about the fruit of our labor. You know, we, we can call it currency or maybe gold. It, we, we work in this life, you know, we are born, and, and as soon as we can, we are, start going to school. You know, we're going to start going to be educated, to have a formation, and with the hopes to end up with some sort of, of a career, you know, because of all the, 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 in which we can use the knowledge and then would have a way of living. And so, what is the best gain? What is the best income? And in this case, I want to consider two options for the first question about, um, about our, our gain, about our income. What could be considered, without a doubt, to be better than fine gold? What could be considered, without a doubt, better than fine gold? You know that the reserves of these countries are in gold uh, uh, bars somewhere, somehow. 
And uh, so that, that is the, the support that for the currency, for the money that we handle in our hands, and also on, uh, now on the virtual money. But uh, is there anything better than that? For, for centuries and millennials, you know, people <laughs> fought in, in the times of uh, pirates and going on boats and doing all kinds of things to get fine gold. And today, well, it has a different name, but it's about the same. So what would be better, what would be best on regard to our gain? What would be better for our living? Well, Proverbs chapter 8 will help us to answer that question. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse, in verse 1, it says, Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding rise her voice? And in verse 18, it says, Which with me, with wisdom, are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. There is a new concept here. Uh, Wisdom says is better than fine gold. Wisdom is better than fine gold. Uh, wisdom walks in the way of righteousness along the path of justice. And wisdom, it says, bestows a rich inheritance to those who love it, making the treasuries full. A renowned minister of television for children, the late Mr. Rogers, said, Life is simple and profound, and what our society offers is superficial and complicated. Have you noticed that nature provides fundamental things to, to life like air, water, light, etc.? for free, but we are also aware that if we do not handle these basic things carefully, life could complicate seriously. Am I wise is the question. Am I wise? How do we live wisely? It is a, a, a popular uh, world. People talk about the lottery. Uh, one of the things that has happened with the lottery is that many people that win, win the lottery, they lose their fortune pretty quick because there is no wisdom. Even having, having the resources, uh, the power, and uh, the benefits of having the riches, all of a the sudden they find themselves back to poverty. So wisdom is definitely better. What is best? It's best that we get out of school, not simply with a title that will help me to get a salary in a business. It is better to come out of school wise enough to participate in the productive life, but end up with justice and righteousness and riches. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3 says that a prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffers for it. That is a basic uh, element of wisdom. And these days, we are really reckless. The prudent man sees danger and takes refuge. But these days we say, no, I am who I am, and they have to want me this way, and it doesn't matter. I don't care. The simple keep going and suffer for it. 
we keep doing the same, the same every year, the same until there's no more youth, there's no more gas, there's no strength, and there's nothing left but anguish. The society of certainty. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffers for it. Many people do you know that very well this category? In Proverbs chapter 14, it says that a wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot headed and reckless. That is the other thing these days. Uh, church, we don't believe in fear. We don't believe that we should have any kind of fear because God is so good, so good that we don't have to fear nothing. The beginning of wisdom, fear of the Lord. It is like, think about the, the signs on the road. Signs that say um, uh, to the trucks that need to change their gears or uh, that the road is too inclined or that is slippery when, when wet. And if we don't pay attention to the signs and if we don't care and if we are not afraid that we could be going to, uh, uh, to a, a, a not convenient speed, then we could be taken. Because fear is part of wisdom. I believe that fear is, is an automatic system of alarm that God has put in us. We are in, in high place that uh, if we fall, we're going to die or suffer seriously. It is important that we fear a sensation like, oh, I should not be here. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil. So we need to understand that fear uh, is for people, I mean that wisdom is for people that open their eyes and look around and make judgments. This convenient, is this better? What is the way? Even goes to the Lord and say, help me understand the moment I'm leaving. We know about many instances of people who know that they are in the wrong path, but that they do not change the lifestyle. Oh, there are people that uh, they buy in the taxes. There are people that they somebody else's children in taxes. They have a better discount and they're the but negotiate that kind of thing. What about drug dealing? Don't we know that we causing? We have. What about gambling? Who benefits from gambling? Except the one who runs it. And how much harm is done? But even our authorities nowadays are choosing gambling to, as a way of. Establishing a budget for the state. That is not wisdom. That is really, that is really building our house on the sand. Remember, a wise shuns evil, but a fool is hot headed and reckless. The base for a life of wisdom is our obedience to the word of God. If you remember, the Lord Jesus said on Matthew chapter 7. Everyone, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, said Jesus, and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and, bet, and beat again that house, and it fell with a great crash. Who is wise according to Jesus in this scripture? Well, it is clear. 
he who hear his words and put them into practice. Hear me. He who hear his words and puts them into practice. So you understand. Number one, wisdom. Wisdom is better than gold. Than fine gold. Wisdom delivers us from danger. Wisdom have us to fear the Lord and shun evil. Wisdom pays attention to what Jesus said and builds his life upon that rock. Wisdom is the best to gain as we grow in life. It's not gold. Better wisdom. I remember then when the Solomon um, became a king and the Lord said, what do you want me to give you? He could have say, give me all the gold of the world, but he said, no, give me wisdom. And you know what? Nobody had more riches than Solomon <laughs> because wisdom is better than fine gold. So as we raise our children, as we have a system of education, as we walk through life, we need to think of wisdom much more than having a bank account. That will come with the wisdom. Wisdom, you need to open your eyes, look around, compare, and make good decisions. Wisdom, you need to fear what is wrong. You need to stay away from it. And wisdom has to embrace the teachings of Jesus. All right? So what is best? Wisdom is better than fine gold. Well, let's talk about now, let's change the subject here. Change the subject. And let's talk about now priorities. Because in life, we make decisions according to our priorities. And in that sense, we have to talk about our daily commitments. What do we do every day? And uh, to define priorities, let's check a couple of things, a couple of the teachings of Jesus. And let's go to uh, Luke chapter 10 um, and read an interesting story. Starting on verse 38, our Jesus and his disciples went on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. You know, in life we need to start distinguishing what, what do I need and what do I want? There are many things that I can do. There are many things that I want to do, but there are many things that I need to do. So we need to figure that out and start working with our needs. And the Lord says that somehow God has designed life so that when you take care of the main need, the rest will fall in place. The rest will fall in place. What was Martha doing on verse 40? 
She was distracted by all the preparations. While the word of life is being shared, she's very worried that, oh, what is the master going to eat when he finishes and he needs to take a rest before he takes the rocks again and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. But in, in the meantime, the word of life, the truth for life, and her ways for victory are just passing by and she cannot grab them. Because she's distracted. There is a lot of distraction in life. Distra justifiable distractions. You know, we got to pay the bills. We got to clean the house. We got to do the garden. We cannot look bad, you know. It's a bad testimony. The teaching here is the need to select what is best. It is very sad that the conviction that abounds more in the world is that we must resolve earthly life matters, matters first. And if there is any time left and there is no opportunity for a family field trip or if there is not a friend's invitation, then I could take time to read the Bible. Remember, we are not talking about doing what is good, but what is best to do. Jesus spoke about the words of life of Matthew chapter 6, and that is something that most of us remember. But let me read it for you. Matthew 6, starting on verse 25, he said, Therefore I'll tell you, this is, this is Jesus talking, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, it is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. I mean, uh, what is the Lord Jesus trying to do here? Because according to our contemporary structure mindset, and it's been through all generations, according to our human mindset, if we don't have to drink, we're, we're about to die. If we don't have to dress, we are about to die because we need to be able to uh, survive in the environment. And if you are not properly dressed, you're going to die. And Jesus says, don't worry about that. What is in his head? Well, he said this. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then the Lord come up, comes up with a question. When he comes up with a question, you got to hold on to your seats because it's going to shake you. He said, are you not much more valuable than they? How is this feeding in our schematics, in our minds, in the strategy of life? Don't worry about those important needs. Come on. Yes. Says the Lord Jesus. Based on what? Based on God's care and God's design of life. Based on God's participation of life. Because that's the problem. We don't believe that God is real. And the Lord has to tell us, okay, so tell me how the birds eat. Did, did they go to school? Was it a private or a public school? So how is the rate of uh, unemployment among the birds? And then he's trying to make us reason. So how is that they survive? And one problem that we have with science is the science, when science doesn't have an answer, gets into a speculation. Well, you know, so many millions of years ago, it was this way and blah, blah, blah. So within a thousand million years again, it's going to be different. Yeah, nobody's going to be uh, all 
uh, an, account, uh, an account. There nobody's going to be called for accountability. Oh, talking doesn't matter. Get the money in the pockets. Continues the Lord Jesus saying, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Yeah, again, questions. Hard questions. But simple questions about life. The problem is that they are shaking our system of life. Aren't you much more valuable than birds? And what is the answer? God cares for them, so he will care for you. Can anyone, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? No way, Jose. So why to worry that way? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much, much more clothe you? You of little faith? That is the problem that changes our priorities. We forget that the Father knows our needs and that he cares for them. That is the problem. We lack faith. And we come out of there saying, oh, God is with me, God is with me. But our ways of living don't show that. So says the Lord Jesus, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Is that, that going to come to our heads anytime soon? Our heavenly Father knows that we're raising children. Our Heavenly Father knows that we pay bills. Our Heavenly Father knows that we, are, we have sicknesses and we need medicines and we need treatment and, and that this is a crazy world in which medicine is so expensive and nobody can handle it by itself. But the question is, doesn't he know? He knows. But we are living like pagans. We are pursuing the same thing of pagans. And pagans are people that don't know God. And for that reason, they believe in many crazy things. If we can uh, describe pagans. So the conclusion of the Lord is, don't be a pagan. Don't run after all crazy things because there is one God who cares. Verse 33, seek first his kingdom. This is us working with wisdom. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. You know, uh, uh, you know how we escape from these kind of things? You know, we, go, we run from this extreme corner the other one, because then, then some people say, okay, God is going to provide everything for me. I'm not going to work. I'm not going to study. I'm not going to do anything but having fun. Give me the best whatever video game or I don't know. Let's make a loan and go on vacation forever. Because... When we come back home, all the bills are going to be paid and God is going to be taken care of. Yes, that, that's the extreme confusion and that's what bothers to understand what is the best. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. When we trust God, we do what we need to do. But we depend on him. Do not worry. Then do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
if we are embracing his will, if we are uh, making a good um, system of priority, everything is going to fall in place. But the Lord is going to be glorified. But we need to realize, my people, that God's values in this life are different to the norms of society. I am calling here to say we need to change the system of life that we have protected and that we, we have kind of worship and that we have followed rigorously because we uh, um, try to be responsible is wrong. This is what this, the Lord is saying. It's wrong. Why? Because don't believe in God because doesn't trust God. It's not because you work. Work is fine. And actually, the Lord says in, in part of the scripture, if you don't work, you should not eat. You, should, you don't have the right to eat if you don't work. Hmm. Some people don't like that. But that's the way God thinks. Ask Adam. But that's not, the thing is that we are living with the wrong set of values. And the Lord is saying it to us. And we think, oh yeah, the Lord wants us to be monks. Well, <laughs> it's not too far from that. Because he wants us to be his kings and priests. But that doesn't mean what you think. What, what we need is to realize that God knows what we need and he doesn't ignore our basic needs. He created us. He knows the order that we need in the world. And he knows that our world is messed up. So we need to reorder our priorities guided by the light of his word. And, and let me close the priority thing. Time is running. Saying uh, what uh, one of the gurus of uh, management, well known for a long time, Stephen Covey said about priorit prioritize. He says the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule. That's not the key. The key is to schedule you. You understand the difference here? The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule. That's what the world does. Okay, we need this, we need that. They, in this commercial, they said this, they said that, and let's see how, what we can do first. No. We need to see what God says his life about, and we need to bring it to the table of schedules. You see, is we need to work we need to follow the priorities. The schedule should follow the priorities, not the priorities follow the schedule. Got it? The schedule needs to follow priorities, not priorities following the schedule. That, that's what we do. So, what is best? Number one, wisdom is much better than fine gold. Number two, we need to prioritize according to God's value. Our priorities need to seek the kingdom of God first, need to seek the spiritual life first. We need to assure that our fellowship with God is secured before my career, before knowing to, uh, starting to form a family, before doing anything in this life. And I know that is far from the norm. I live here. I live in this world. But let's talk about a third uh, comparison here and what's best. And uh, now we're going to be talking about this life or the next life. We're talking about to stay here or to die. 
what's best. And uh, this is also shocking for our system of life. The Apostle Paul said to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 and on, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me, said Paul. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Depart and be with Christ is better by far, but it's more necessary for you that I remain in the body. And I'm, I have to clarify here. He's not trying to say, should I jump from a bridge or something? No. Yeah, there's a bunch of people jumping from bridges with bungee cords, but that's craziness. That's, that's not reality. That is, that is evidence of being bored and not enjoying the beauty of God's creation. That is, that's to me, my opinion. And you can, you can cross that out. Because that's my personal opinion. Paul says, for me to live is Christ. Do you have Christ? You're not alive. If you don't have Christ, you are not living. It, then it would be fit very well the, the, the series, the series of movies that incredibly have been so, uh, um, how you say, um, Famous and have followed for so many people. The Living Dead, something like that is the title. There are, there are people that are dead, but they walk around and, I don't know, they want to eat, they, uh, they do something, they do things. But many of us are those zombies because um, we're walking, but we're dead because we don't have Christ. You don't have Christ. You don't have life. That is the concept of Christianity. Christianity is not just simply another religion in, in the society. Oh, no, no, no. There are serious concepts here about what is best. To live is Christ. To die, to die is gain. In Romans chapter 8, the same apostle Paul says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and coercive with Christ, if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. He's saying what we're living here is not good enough compared with what we're going to be living up in heaven. That's why the Lord Jesus said, set your eyes up in heaven. Make treasures in heaven. And he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you so you are where I am. How is our interest for that? Because this is a pilgrimage. We are in the preparation. This is a journey of preparation for the real life that comes after we die or after the Lord will come for us. That's a different concept. And let me, uh, I know that shocks terribly, but it's the word of God. That's God's decision. When you know Jesus, you figure it. You accept it. You embrace it. You have joy in your life. Even though I have to tell you, it makes sense. It makes sense. The uh, Anglican Arch Archbishop of Canterbury in the 19 in the 1600s, he uh, said, "He who provides for this life but does not take care for eternity is wise for a moment, but a fool forever." How much sense does it make? He who provides for this life but does not take care of for eternity is wise for the moment but a fool forever. 
That's why, that's why Jesus said, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. The problem is that many of us haven't tasted that, haven't tasted that food. What is best is not this life, it's eternal life. It's not the life we're living, it's the life that God is going to give us after this. So, concluding my message today, what is best? Number one, wisdom is much, much better, far better than fine gold. Number two, we need to prioritize the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is will commands, his teachings are much more important than the whole process of formation and education that we have for a regular person in our society. It is much more important. And I don't mean take your children off school. I mean go to the right priority and put it in the first place. That's what it means. And number three, if you think that this life is good, you don't know what good is until you go to the next. The next life is the best, is what God has prepared for us. Nothing in this life compares with the coming glory. That is why the Bible says that we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So Hebrews chapter 2, and uh, that's my conclusion, verses 1 through 3 say, we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received is just punishment, it, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. How we will escape, we neglect to pay attention. Be wise. Make the right priority. And that this life is going to end soon. Ready for eternal life. So I'm going to leave you with a thought, and this is my creativity. If we do not change our lives to go for what is best, this is my illustration. It will be like discovering fruit as a mean of food and leave eating the skin and discarding the fruit itself. We do not act and embrace what God calls best. We are be going to be feeding ourselves with fruit skin while the real fruit is going to get lost.